this uh, section, we will talk about the mechanism of hormone action. And when we are talking about this hormone action, we will separate it into two categories. We will try to see how the quick acting hormones work and then we will come to the mechanism of slow acting hormones. So here first we would talk of mechanism of quick acting hormone. So how these quick acting hormones, how do they work? So mechanism of hormone action of quick acting hormone. And here we will take two examples. One example we would be discussing would be of uh, adrenaline or noradrenaline which we call the catecholamines and second example we would take of insulin and after that we would come to slow acting hormones. But before that we need to understand few important things. Number one, these quick acting hormones they have their receptors on the membrane of the cell have receptors on the membrane. That means these hormones, they do not go inside the target cell. On the contrary, they just attach to the receptor which is on the surface. They are large size and because of this large size, they are not able to penetrate the plasma membrane of the cell and so they get attached to the receptors which are on the surface. They always work by formation of a second messenger. Work by formation of a second messenger. How does this happen? To understand a brief outline before we take the specific example, say this is a plasma membrane of a cell and here is a receptor of the hormone. So hormone comes and binds to this receptor. That means this hormone is acting as the first messenger. This, as soon as the receptor hormone complex is formed, this is receptor hormone complex. This complex is going to stimulate some reactions on the inner membrane side. And as soon as this reaction is triggered, there would be multiple molecules which would be formed and they would bring about multiple reactions here. This is known as a cascade effect. And this cascade effect would be brought about certain molecules which would be produced here. And these molecules would act as the second messengers. So this is the brief outline of how the second messenger system is going to work. Now we would take the example in this case. The first example that we are talking of is of catecholamines. Catecholamines is a term given to adrenaline and noradrenaline together. So this includes adrenaline and nor, noradrenaline. These are quick acting hormones. Now how this mechanism works that we need to understand. If this is the plasma membrane. The receptor of adrenaline, if we are talking of, say this is the receptor of adrenaline. Receptor of adrenaline. And now the hormone which is coming is going to bind with this receptor. This hormone is say adrenaline. This is adrenaline. Adrenaline when comes and binds to this receptor which is on the surface. Then, first step, hormone release. This second step, hormone receptor complex is formed. And this complex is always on the surface because its receptor is on the surface. 
that means the first messenger is the hormone itself so hormone is the first messenger as soon as the hormone receptor complex is formed this complex this protein undergoes a conformational change and because of this conformational change an enzyme which is present on the inner side of the membrane gets active or let me write it like this here we are saying this conformational change here so this protein has undergone some change and because of this the enzyme becomes active so this is inactive enzyme the name of the enzyme is adenyl cyclase adenyl cyclase and this is the active enzyme so what has happened so far the hormone was released hormone attached to the receptor the receptor undergoes a change now this receptor is going to undergo a change here itself so this changed receptor brings about one more change and the change is in the enzyme the enzyme is on the inner side of the membrane adenyl cyclase which is inactive because of this conformational change becomes active now this active enzyme is going to bring about a reaction this reaction is breaking down of atp into cyclic amp and inorganic phosphates from triphosphate it breaks into monophosphates and two phosphates are released this reaction takes place in presence of magnesium ions this cyclic amp is going to act as the second messenger this amp cyclic amp now will bring about some more reactions cyclic amp will help in the conversion of an enzyme which is called protein kinase this is inactive into protein kinase active so basically cyclic amp is converting inactive protein kinase into a uh, active protein kinase active protein kinase will help in conversion of phosphorylase inactive to active and now this active will help in the conversion of glycogen phosphorylase glycogen phosphorylase inactive into active so now this enzyme is active which enzyme is active here is glycogen phosphorylase and i'm going to write it here active glycogen phosphorylase brings about a reaction that is it breaks glycogen into glucose phosphate and this glucose phosphate gets converted into glucose just to understand this um, amplitude of this reaction which uh, which we are calling the cascade mechanism is that one cyclic amp as soon as is produced in about 1 to 2 minutes it is capable of releasing 100 million glucose molecules in 1 to 2 minutes so the, and we know adrenaline is required or it works in stress situation in stress situation muscles would require more of glucose so that there can be quick action it is a quick acting hormone so a situation where adrenaline is released that means body requires more glucose to uh, fulfill the requirement of a stress situation adrenaline is a stress hormone 
So how is it going to act in a very very fast manner so that the glucose can be released, it can be broken down. Say a situation is that uh, this glucose is required in muscle, we have to run from a stress situation. So glucose requirement is immediate. So a chain of reaction takes place. Adrenaline which is acting as the first messenger binds to the receptor. Receptor is on the surface because these are bigger molecules. They bind on the surface receptors. As soon as this complex is formed, the receptor undergoes a conformational change. Its structure changes. This change activates an enzyme. This enzyme is on the inner side of the membrane. It is still in the membrane. And now this enzyme will bring about reactions in the cytoplasm. There are multiple step reactions which are going to take place. One enzyme activated will convert many ATPs into many cyclic AMPs. Each cyclic AMP will bring about all these reactions. So if there are hundreds of cyclic AMPs produced, this reaction would get multiplied 100 times. So we are starting with one cyclic AMP which is acting as a second messenger. It will convert a protein kinase which is from inactive to active. Active protein kinase would help in phosphorylase kinase to active. Again inactive to active. This active will help in conversion of glycogen phosphorylase kinase from inactive to active. And this active glycogen phosphorylase will break glycogen into glucose 6-phosphate and glucose will be released. And the number is with one cyclic AMP in about 1 to 2 minutes time, 100 million glucose molecules would be released in the blood. And all this glucose will be available for breakdown so that ATP can be released. And that is why we say that it is a quick acting hormone. In just one to two minutes, millions of glucose are released and that is with one AMP. But if say 10 ATPs are broken down into 10 CAMPs, that means this reaction gets amplified 10 times or 100 times or 1000 times. And that is why we call it a cascade effect. This is what we were talking about. If we take a situation, all these molecules which we have drawn, say these are cyclic AMPs. Each cyclic AMP will show its effect and millions of glucose molecules would be released in the blood. And that requirement of the stress situation can be fulfilled. So this is one example of a quick acting hormone. Their receptors are on the membrane. They are large molecules. They cannot cross the plasma membrane. And they work by formation of a second messenger and the effect is cascade effect. Cascade effect is at every step there are multiple molecules which are going to help in bringing about the next step reaction. This is one example. The next example that we would be discussing is of insulin and that is again in the quick acting hormone category.